Hello, my dear students. How are you? I hope you all be fine with your families. I really, really miss you. And I really hope that we can be together again in our classroom and soon. Today, we are going to review the previous material that I published on the website of the school, the past simple or simple past. And um, after this class, you will be able to identify these tenses use and structure in listening and reading texts. That's the objective for you today. Before we begin, I'll tell you that uh, what you have to do. First, we are going to review this, the use and the um, structure of the simple past with regular irregular verbs and the verb to be. And um, then I will show you a little trick that I hope it's useful for you to remember some of the irregular verbs. And finishing this video, at the end of this video, you will find a link where you have to go and answer some questions in a Google Form doc. So I can see how much have you learned. And I remind you that Miss Valeria and me are eager to um, solve any doubt that you have in our emails. Please write to us to our email addresses that are in the website of the school. <clears throat> so, let's begin. As we saw in the previous PowerPoint presentation about the simple past uh, and its use and uh, structure, I um, focus on three principal uses for this tense, the simple past. First, we use it to talk about past finished, finished actions actions that finished in the past, uh, I was doing something and that action finished. For example, I gave the letter to Henry. Le di la carta a Henry. Not now. It could be yesterday or a week ago, I don't know, but it, this happened in the past. We also use the simple past to talk about a past habit something that I usually did in the past. For example, she often played with him. Ella a menudo jugaba con él. Not anymore. That action, she doesn't, she doesn't play with him anymore. <laughs> the third use is to talk about one action after another. This is when we tell a story, for example, and here I wrote um, an example that has to do with the real life. He got up, first action, had breakfast, second action, and went to work, third action. One action after another. Él se levantó, tomó desayuno y fue a trabajar. Okay, is that clear? I hope so. So. Some important words that you have to remember are the adverbs of frequency or frequency adverbs. And here I wrote some of them, the most important ones or the most used. For example, last week. Last week, it would be like in Spanish, la semana pasada. Here, week, I can change this for uh, another word, another time expression like um, year, month, week, morning, etc. Last week, last morning, last um, month, etc. <clears throat> In 1997, that's very easy, in 1997, yesterday, that means ayer. A week ago, hace una semana. And a week, we also can change it for another time expression. When he was young, por ejemplo. When he was young, significa cuando él era joven, right? And uh, here, for example, in this um, sentence that I wrote for you, I gave the letter to Henry. 
I could use, mm, no sé, I gave the letter to Henry yesterday. Le di la carta a Henry ayer. Or I could say, I gave the letter to Henry last week. Le di la carta a Henry la semana pasada. Or I could say, I gave the letter to Henry a week ago. Le di la carta a Henry hace una semana. So, can you see the use of the address of frequency? Great. Okay, let's continue. In this diagram, I hope it's useful for you, I wrote um, how we use the simple past with regular, irregular verbs, and also with the verb to be, that it's different to these other two, right? So, we, we're going to begin here with the regular verbs. With regular verbs, those are the easiest because you only have to add ed to the end of the verb, at the end of the verb. Here, for example, play, it's a regular verb. And when I want to say play in the past, I have to add ed, right? Okay, let's see some spelling rules. When with most verbs, with most verbs, the only thing that I have to do is to add ed at the end of the verb. For example, walk and play, we only add the ed because these are very common verbs. Walked and played. This is the past tense of this, this base form. With the verbs that end in a knee, if the verbs if the verb ends in a knee, the only thing that I have to do is to add only a d. Like we can see here with like that ends in e and move that also ends in e. Liked, moved. With verbs that end in a consonant, in a consonant letter, and a Y, what do we have to do? We have to change that Y for an I. And then, only then, I can add ED. These are, these are two examples. Carry, carry, and study. In yellow, we have the consonant. And in blue, we have the Y. And here, I change the Y for an I, and I add ED. The same with study. D consonant, Y. I change the I for, a, I'm sorry, the Y for an I and ED. With verbs that end in a single consonant, consonant, one consonant, and before that consonant, there is a vowel, a vowel like a, a, e, o, u. What we have to do is to double the last letter. See? Plan, for example, here we have a vowel, a single consonant. So I double the consonant and then I add ed. Okay? Stop. O, con o vowel, P consonant, stopped, double the consonant, and then I add ED. Right? Okay, let's see the structure for negative, interrogative, and positive form. Here, there is a little summary of the, of the, the same thing that I'm going to explain and, and with examples here. This is a little summary. So, in the past tense, in the positive form, with regular verbs, I had to add ed. In negative form, I need an auxiliary verb, didn't. And in the question form, I also need the auxiliary verb, did. The same here with the irregular verbs, but the difference is that when I use irregular verbs, the verb changes in the past. Go, went. That's the past simple of go. And in negative, didn't, 
I need an auxiliary verb and in the question form I also need an auxiliary verb. Here I have the structure in the positive form. I need a subject, subject like La, Laura, Kevin, Margot, uh, she. Verb in past, the verb always has to be in past in the positive form and a complement. Here I wrote an example that says she drove, this is my verb in the past, to her house. In the negative form it's almost the same, but here I need an auxiliary verb. I have the subject, the auxiliary verb didn't, and the verb that I wrote here in parentheses, it has to be in the base form and the complement. Look at the example. She didn't drive, not drove, this is the past, this is the base form, to her house. And in the question form, I use did at the beginning, the auxiliary verb, then I write the subject and the verb again in base form, plus the complement. Remember that we use question marks only at the end. So, my question would be, did she drive to her house? Condujo ella a su casa? And here, I'm sorry. And here, I am, um, if I want to do a more specific question, I could use a WH word, like when, where, where what, why, who, etc. <clears throat> Let's see, ah, this is a case for <clears throat> um, regular and irregular verbs. But with the verb to be, we do things different because this verb to be, as I was telling you before, doesn't need an auxiliary verb. <clears throat> Look at here, affirmative, negative, and interrogative form. I wrote this for you to remember because some of you forget uh, what pronoun goes with, with was and what pronoun goes with uh, where. Here, I wrote that he, she, it, and I go with was. I, he, she, it, with was. And you, we, they, with where. Right? In the negative, it would be wasn't or weren't. And in the interrogative, what I have to do is to change the verb with the pronoun, the order, I have to change it. First goes the verb, was aware, and then goes the pronoun. <clears throat> Here I have the structure, subject, right, was aware, depending on what is the pronoun, and the complement. She was in home last night. Ella estaba en casa anoche. Subject in the negative, wasn't aware and depending again on what is the subject or the pronoun and the complement. She wasn't at home last night. And the question form. Remember that I have to change the change, change the place of the subject and the verb. Was aware first and the subject and the complement. Was she at home last night? Estaba ella en casa anoche. So, is that clear? I hope so. Let's continue with this um, little trick. I have to tell you that learning the irregular verbs, it's a lot of stress. So, you have time, you have a lot of time, but uh, keep calm and learn your irregular verbs. I'm going to show you a little trick that it's useful to remember some of the verbs, some of the irregular verbs. Here it's the tree, as I call, call it. Here we have um, branches, branches, las ramas, of the uh, different kinds of irregular verbs. Here, for example, I have, uh, ah, first. Here, uh, as you can see, here we have three verbs, drink, drank, drunk, three columns, right? 
this third column we are not going to use it yet because we don't need it right now but we're going to forget about it for for a moment but only for a moment because um, in the future we're going to use them okay to see another tense so for the moment you can forget about them for the moment we are going to focus on this the base form and the past sample base form and past sample okay in blue in this blue branch I have those verbs that change the vowel that it's in it in the base form to an A in the past simple. Look at this. In the base form, beber, drink, right? With an I, with an I. In the past, that I changes for an A, drink, drank. Sing. Again, sing, cantar, sang, canto, swim, nadar, swam, nado. Okay, did you see that we changed that vowel for an A? The vowel that is here, change it for an A. Easy for you to remember. Those, these verbs here are the easiest to remember, the easiest in orange, this orange branch, because they do not change to the past simple or to the past continue, to the past participle. It doesn't change. It's the same word like it says here. Cost in base form, cost in the past form. Yeah? Here we have this green branch where I can see that in the past simple I have to change the vowel or vowels that are on the verb for a no. Here we have the verb speak that is hablar or hablar. And those vowels here change for a no, right? Speak. The same with write, escribir, right? Write, that I changes for a no. Drive, the same, the I changes for a no. Break, those two vowels change for a no, broke. Is that clear? Here, in the purple branch, we have those verbs that change the last letter or, la or last letters for a T. Send with a D changes for a T. Learn, here we have to add a T. Fail changes the last letter for a T. Keep changes to kept. See? Okay, here I have those verbs that change to the base form to um, U-G-H-T. So think in the past simple and also in the past participle change to thought. Did you see that I only maintained the two letters, the two first letters, and I wrote U-G-T. Catch, caught, by, bought. And these are the most difficult, I think, but I'm, I'm sure that you know most of them because we have used them. Uh, they change. They are irregular. There is no trick for you to remember this. Okay. And that's it. So, remember, remember to um, go to the link below and um, complete the Google form that it's there because I need to know how much have you learned about the past simple. I send you a lot of hooks. We will be together very, very soon. And um, keep being patient. Kisses. Bye.